have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Father paid the cost. cost. No, I'm not perfect. God just forgave me. Got a new swag. Praising Christ like I'm crazy. This my Christ swag. Yeah. My Christ swag. Yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag. Okay. My Christ swag. Yeah. This my Christ swag. Yeah. My Christ swag. Yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag. My Christ swag. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm from the street. South of the arch, man, where I used to drink, roll up, and used to spark, man. Now I got my hair straight, shining like a million bucks. Christ elevated me, going past the ceiling, bruh. St. Louis did it. God Squad t-shirt, homie, how you doing? Please to meet you, this my rebirth. Addicted to the word, it's pumping through my artery. Faith on the meal, the swag is a part of me. Now my glow bright. Souls been redeemed, covered in the blood, no shower, cause I'm clean, done playing games, rid of the Xbox, almost flatline, but Christ made my chest pop, walked on the edge, the devil made me wobble, Jesus took the wheel, fast forward, full throttle, still in the hood, got that street slang, mixed with the spirit, it's a G thing. Deep, high, tall, tall, just the way I walk, walk. Been set free, cause my father paid the cost. cost No, I'm not perfect, God just forgave me Got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy This my Christ swag, yeah My Christ swag, yeah uh-huh. This my Christ swag, okay. yeah My Christ swag, yeah God squad, this my bruh Christ swag. Yeah. My Christ swag, yeah uh-huh. This my Christ swag, God, yeah My Christ swag, yeah Look. Uh, my whole style come from Christ yeah. So own it? No sir, you can't put a price Like white on rice, I got his blood on me To be honest, I just care about my guy homie And if I'm only living for him It don't really even matter what y'all think of me Opinions, you can let them be I'm killing it, I let them see The old me is gone Keep the demons on my heart Then Christ find a home yeah. No more Patron or Nitrous I might just give God a praise with my best He's high, yes, glory in here, hallelujah. hallelujah, yes sir, put my trust in the Lord, I ain't having no fear, no I don't have a care, besides pleasing my father, tell any hater you see man, don't even bother, cause Jesus is my medicine, I ain't never hurting, catching waves of his glory, man I'm Christ swag serving, yeah. Yeah. I talk, talk, just the way I walk, walk. been set free, cause my father paid the cost. cost, no I'm not perfect, God just forgave me, got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy, this my Christ swag. Yeah, my Christ swag. Yeah, uh-huh. this my Christ swag. Okay, nah. my Christ swag. Yeah, this my Christ swag. Yeah, my Christ swag. Uh-huh. Yeah, this my Christ swag. God squad. My Christ swag. Yeah. Lie, uh, okay, I get it from my father uh-huh. Head to toe, swinging on that word, that's the motto yeah. Used to be a up or down, flipper like the lotto uh-huh. Roll with big drink and ST, old squad uh-huh. though Now I'm uh-huh. aiming at the world with that blessed go yeah. Hard repetition, stay flexing, holy rollers know uh-huh. When you see that light shine, this ain't baby doe He ain't got a VVS on him, what a freak show uh-huh. nah. No, but I'm close with my father though nah. I ain't Leroy, but the boy got a lot of glow, took a whole lot of land out to kill his ego, uh-huh. missing my whole purpose like Shaq with some free throws, uh-huh. if you rap in vain, can't edify the people, uh-huh. swag on 100, gaining speed, adios flow, and I'm top flow uh-huh. reaching for his glory, you think I got some swag, Christ the one that poured it on me I talk, talk, just the way I walk, walk, been set free cause my father paid the cost, cost. no I'm not perfect, God just forgave me, got a new swag praising Christ like I'm crazy, this my Christ way, yeah. My Christ way, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ way, okay. My Christ way, yeah. This my Christ way, yeah. My Christ way, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ way. My Christ way, yeah. Yeah, welcome back. 
Oh, man, thank y'all. Welcome back again. It's uh, another wonderful show on Elation Radio. Thank you, Sister Kim. Elation Radio, they have been good to us, and it's just awesome. Uh, this is uh, Cedric, this is Minister Cedric coming back at you again, uh, Relentless Pursuit. And today, I will tell you, family, uh, it's been a trying few weeks for me. It's, it's been trying, and... Uh, I've been struggling with just a few things, but, you know, hopefully I can get it all off my chest today. Um, got my boy Jason on with me. Uh, Jason, you, 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 you in right now? Yes, sir, I'm, I'm here. How are today? Oh, man, I'm doing real good. I'm doing real good. Welcome back. Welcome back. You had a good week, I hope. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you know. uh, well, that's good. That's good. I'm glad one of us had a great week. I tell you, I, I've been struggling with a few things. You know how you know how I'm big on this whole relentless pursuit thing. You know, no matter how tired you get, no matter what life deals you, you just keep going because if you're doing what God has called you to do, it will be successful. And success to God and success to me, the individual, it might look a little different at the end. You know what I'm saying? God may have me do some things that I don't think is cool, but, um, man, it's been a good, good, good week. Uh, I've been struggling, and I tell you, uh, I'm, I'm gonna start this off with just a, just a quick scripture. I'm not trying to, uh, y'all know me. I just want to keep it uh, uh, real, you know. But, but you know, God is the, the center of my life, and uh, no matter how you may see me on the block, no matter how you may see me at work, God definitely is the center of my life. So, I want to start off today just talking a little bit about John 14:27 when he talked about. Um, when Jesus said that uh, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Ah, man, I ain't got no peace lately. You know, I, I keep on turning on the news. If anybody knows me, I'm a news jack, uh, junkie. I love politics. I enjoy news, good, bad, and ugly, but it's been some really ugly stuff out here lately. And, um, uh, you know, and if you know me on a personal level, you know, I love my weapons. I, I really enjoy uh, hanging out at the ranges, <clears throat> checking my skill set, see if I still got it from back way back when. And, yeah, you know, but, man, I'm tired. I'm really tired, and I, I've been feeling lately like I ain't had a lot of peace. Like my mind is all over the place, and I know God keeps me. And it kind of just leads me to where I'm going, like, like, I have no peace when I look at the news, right? But I won't stop looking at the news because the information, I don't care what anybody tell you, information is key. Understand what's coming, but if you're looking at the news, it's already here. You hear me? So you're already a little bit late. But but still, keep an eye out. Intel is intel. No, no matter where you get it from, whether it's good, it's bad, it's ugly, um, I read the papers. I'm still one of the few people probably who read actual papers and not just on the Internet. Um, I like to tell people, you know, you stay informed. And then the other way I stay informed, me personally, is I'm constantly in my books, you know. Um, I got a serious collection now. I remember 17 years ago when I moved to Louisville, Kentucky, I didn't have any books. I probably had two or three books, but my, I got a whole library now, and I read. Uh, I, I stay on top of my thing. But, you know, I'm still I'm, I'm kind of heartbroken with, with all the stuff that's going on, you know. Um it takes me back to a time in my life back in 1992 before I came home from Iraq uh, during the Gulf War, and uh, I'm heartbroken. And and so uh, tonight, you know, I want to talk about peace, um, like relationships. You know, it don't even matter. Me and Jason, we're just going to kind of chop it up a little bit. I got a few questions I've gotten from a, a few people. I'm going to answer those questions. But, but we talk about peace, whether it be peace. Whether it be society, you know, what America calls peace, what, what our society calls peace, or whether it be peace that you call peace in your home, peace in your relationship, peace with who you are. You know, I want to talk about what peace is because I got to go back to what to, 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 to what our Lord and Savior said about that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Ah. Give I unto you, and 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 I'm telling you, ah, I'm telling you right now that right there that that says something to me. 
And so I want to talk a little bit about peace. Like like um, um, Jason, you know, let's talk about what peace is to us. You know what I mean? Uh, is that okay with you? That works for me, man. Uh, that works. Uh, I know we ain't going to have some peace in a minute, <laughs> but I ain't going to call you out. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I, I just, I, 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 I like it, <clears throat> and I know I stopped it short of the part where it says, let not your heart be troubled. You know, let not your heart be afraid, right? But, 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 man, what, what to you, man, uh, uh, one friend to another, I mean, wh- what do you, what is your peace? What, 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 how would you define peace? I think for me, I mean, I, I think for me, peace is what the Bible. I think we, we, we have the, the ability to confuse between what I like to say, peace and security, right? So mm. before I define peace, let me define what security is because we get confused. Okay. Security yeah. is a comfort in your circumstances and in, mm. in, in your time, right? When I, I feel, you know, I feel comfortable right now. I feel comfortable because I've got this big 401k plan or I got this savings account. So I feel comfortable about the future. I feel like I can, I can handle any challenges today and tomorrow. And that's security. You know, um, also huh. like from a relational perspective, I got somebody who loves me and they're going to be with me today and for the future. Right. When we talk about security, you know, I, I think a lot of people for me misuse the word of peace for security. Now, when we talk about what peace is, I think peace yeah. is something yeah. that transcends your circumstance. Right. That okay, the, doesn't go matter ahead. what's going on outside of you. Within you, there is a quiet calm, a quiet confidence, and you know that you're going to be okay, right? Um, that only comes from a relationship with Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So when we're defining peace, for me, I, I always like to tell people, are you, are you searching for peace or are you searching for security? Because one of them is going to be subject to the circumstance security, and the other one is going to be internal. And that's what I define peace as. Uh, so, so in other words, yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter your circumstance, if you're hanging on the ledge and about to fall to your death, your peace doesn't come from that circumstance. Am I right? Right. That that that, 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 that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, that, that that peace comes from within, not from. It comes from the inside out, not from the outside in. So, so, so what you're saying is. Our peace comes from here it is that 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 peace that we feel it comes from the inside, and that coming from the inside is given to us by Christ, am I right by our Lord and Savior right yes sir and, and, and so as the Bible says that I will give you a peace uh, that surpasses I'm gonna put it in layman's terms that surpasses the peace that the world can give you right. Right. Then then I gotta I gotta ask you, I gotta ask you, I gotta ask you, I gotta ask you. Why do I feel this unrest right now? I feel like you know, I'm just asking 'cause 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 maybe you can help me understand by the end of this by the end of this uh the, the this podcast because I'm gonna tell you, I am I'm, I'm I'm feeling some kind of way. And the, and what I'm feeling inside I'm just gonna you can be my therapist for an hour. <laughs> what I'm feeling inside is that it's it's more of rage. It's not anger. It's not directed at anyone or anything except the enemy and the tools. Those of us who 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 become tools of the enemy. But but I'm not gonna go there. But the tools of the enemy. So so how can I get peace out of that? Because I know somebody's feeling the exact same way I'm feeling. I'm not the only one in the world feeling like this. Man, you're not the only one with uh, feeling like that. If you want to be, mm, if you, if okay. you're being honest, right? And and you know, these, yeah. I don't know. This last week, with all the 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 violence and 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 the mass shootings, it it it, it it's hurt my heart, right? And 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 I'm struggling to find that peace. So just know, like, 
you know, it's not something. It's something that's pretty prevalent. And, 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 then, and we've been, I was lucky to sit down with a, with a group of men in my men's group. And then just across the board, there was just a general sense of, man, this just this don't feel good, right? You know, so. Yeah, yeah. So, so definitely it's something that's out there, it's prevalent, and, you know, we, we're trying to get it figured out. And, and see, that's funny because, because like, 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 I feel like sometimes enough's enough. And when you say enough's enough, that peace should be like, 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 like right there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, God, I done prayed. I done done what I can do. And that peace should be here. And, and, and it's hard. It's hard because this world we live in tells me, and this is what I get from looking at the news and looking at all these other things. What, what I get is, Times are hard right now. You might not have no peace right now, but if you just keep going, and and I think that I think the word of God contradicts that. You know, like like I'm feeling like, you know, some of us are getting frustrated. I, I'll give you an example that the the I won't even call his name out, but the man who went into the hospital and killed the doctor and his aide. He 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 was he had back surgery, and and he was feeling all this pain. Now now being a man. Who, man, I'm telling you, I had my neck, my leg operated on the same time and crushed my neck. I can't, they don't know if I can, I'm going to be able to walk and all this other good stuff. I get to my, my man, wonderful, wonderful friend and his wife to super good care of me, but, but, but I can't even get off the bed. I'm telling you, the pain was so great in my neck that, man, tears would be running down my eyes. And, and, and I know if I can get up this one time, I may be able to get up a second time, and I may be able to get up a third or fourth time, and and I eventually, my getting up, right, will come easier. There will be less physical pain with my getting up, but the world says to me, and if I look at it the way the world looks at it, it should have been instant. The doctors should have fixed me, and they should have gave me a collar, and they should have gave me some apparatus. There should be something that's invented to help me get out of that bed so I don't have to feel the pain that I felt. And I keep saying, God, why do you keep putting us through this? And, and tell me if I'm right or wrong. And maybe I'm rambling, but I, I just want to put this out there. I believe that the word of God was telling me at that point in my life, you know, I wanted to quit. I wanted to give up. Man, it just hurt so much. I can't even describe the pain that I was feeling, right? It was that great. And, 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 and I was always praying, God, Man, this hurts. Why well, I gotta keep going through this? What do you say to somebody who feels like this, Jason? What do you say to and, somebody like this? How... Uh, I, I think that's I think that's the challenge, right? And you said to yourself that we're looking for immediate relief, right? We're looking for something to happen, and for it to happen like right now. And you know, and and sometimes when we when we're in those situations, you know, and, and the government in Oklahoma is a prime example. He felt like, hey, I shouldn't have to be dealing with this. And the fact that I'm still dealing with this, um, there's a problem. And and the reality was is that sometimes peace is not immediate, right? But once again, when your peace is based on your circumstance, it's harder to hold on to that um, to that 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 timeliness. To be sitting in a situation and, and, and to know that, hey, I don't like this situation. I'm not feeling good about this situation, but I'm in this situation. And when you're focused on your circumstance, it can become it can become overwhelming and daunting, right? And you look yeah. for that immediate relief, right? And you and you focus on that, and and, and it, it, it creates a desire for immediate relief because you're constantly in it you're you're thinking about it you're 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 playing it over and over in your head and whatever disruption is causing it it it, it feels like it never goes away because you're constantly living it and living it and what i would say with somebody in that circumstance in that situation is you've got to take a step back and you've got to look at the bigger picture right you got to look at okay you know especially if i'm a christian Right, you know, for for non Christians, becomes a little bit more difficult. But for a Christian, it's really simple. Once once I put myself in the hands of God, nothing, I mean, nothing, comes to me unless it passes through those hands. And and if we believe Scripture, which we do, we understand Scripture. Everything that happens, everything God allows for us, is ultimately can be used for His good. 
So if I could just take a step back, you know, and not and not just continue to play my circumstance, and look, realize the the bigger picture. I mean, God's yeah. hand just passed through His hand, yeah. and everything that passes through His hand is for my good. He'll block the things that we will be no good from it, right? And we we see evidence of that. You know, we see evidence of that all the time. Oh man, I didn't go to like something came over me not to go to that party, and next thing you know, everybody got arrested, or something came over me. You know, maybe I maybe I should slow down. Next thing you know, the accident happens three seconds in front of me. You know, if I, if I didn't mm. if I didn't respond to that, so we see that all the time where God will block us from things that are not good. So when things yeah. are happening to us and our circumstances don't feel good, we got to remember that same God that's out there blocking things that's not for our good is allowing things for our good. So for somebody who's <laughs> in that circumstance and situation, I always tell them you got to yeah. take a step back. And get the and, and, and get that what we call it that that fifty thousand view uh, uh, of, of the circumstance and the situation. Fifty thousand view. Explain it. That fifty thousand. Are we talking views, fifty thousand feet? Oh, fifty yeah, thousand feet. Okay, sorry, I understand sorry, that. Sorry, yeah, sorry, I, sorry. I like to, I like to you know going back to my call sign when I was a young soldier, hawk. I, I like to see that bird's eye view. But so 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 what you're saying to me is this right here. And I'm not trying to be funny because, cause, cause, you know, we all get in these situations. We get stuck. And a lot of us don't want to admit that we're stuck. So so what you're saying is that no matter what my circumstance, no matter what the trial I'm going through, you're saying that the peace that I'm looking for doesn't come from the situation. In other words, if my wife is about to leave me, if I maybe I committed a, a, a infidelity, maybe maybe I stole something. You saying to me that Cedric, that's not where your peace comes from. Your peace, the peace that you seek. So while I'm struggling today, are you telling me that the peace that I seek comes from God? Comes from Christ himself. It doesn't come from my situation or any circumstance that I'm in. And when I'm in these tough situations, are you saying to me that I need to have peace regardless? Are you saying that I need to have faith in God? Are you, are you saying that to me? That, 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 that I'm about to be shot and killed right now. Are you saying that I need to, and the peace that I should feel, should not be from the circumstances. It should only be from God. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. And you've got to seek that peace, right? You you've got to look for what? that peace, and 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 you've got to you've got to you've got to you've got to religiously pursue that peace because the world will try to take it away. The world is gonna yeah. try to rob you of it. You know, life is gonna try to rob you of it. You know, we spend so much time in the active, intentional pursuit. For you know, for money, for fame, for for, for stuff, mm. you know, we have to have that yeah. same relentless pursuit for our peace. And, and, and but don't get it confused. A lot of people like to use that term. I'm protecting my peace, and then make moves on their own accord, right? Well, Uh-oh. I don't need to talk to this person because I'm protecting my peace. Well, I don't need to deal with that thing because I'm protecting my peace. No, no, no. That's that's not what we're doing, right? We're avoiding. Ah. The, a certain certain situation. Protecting your peace means fighting for that, fighting for that relationship with Christ in the midst of the circumstance. All right. To say like, all right. hey, all right. you know what? I'm in the midst of this circumstance. You know, I'm hanging on this cliff, and it'd be easy for me to look down and see how far down I gotta fall. But how about I look up and say, okay, guy, I'm hanging on here, and I'm gonna hang on as long as I can. And as soon as I let go, I know you're gonna catch me. Okay. Oh, Rest well, in peace. Stop right there. Oh, yeah. wait, stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. <laughs> wait a minute. You saying to me, God, I'm hanging on to this situation like a hair in a biscuit. And I'm going to draw my peace. I'm, I'm going to draw my peace from your word. Wait a minute. I'm going to, I know that this may not end well for me, but I'm not going to focus on that. I, I, I repented of, of the sins that I've committed. And you saying to me that my peace comes from just knowing Christ would deliver me. One way or the other, he's going to deliver me. What about when I'm heartbroken? What about when I'm heartbroken? I'll tell you, heartbreak is hard, right? You know, we we suffer through it. And, and, you know, we we, we have that that, that feeling 
You know, I always, as I go through heartbreak, what I thank God for is two different things. I thank God, one, for, first of all, allowing me to feel, right, for blessing me with feeling. Right? I always tell people, feelings to me are blessings from God, and he gives them to us so that we can experience our circumstances on a greater level, right? And we forget that, you know? Uh, we forget that it's easy just to go through life and have circumstances, but we feel things like happiness that takes that circumstance to the next level. But that same feeling that takes that circumstance to the next level positively can take it negatively, but we want, we don't want that. So for me, I just focus on God for, for allowing me to experience that circumstance on a level. Then I focus on the fact that, you know, I always tell people when you're heartbroken, you can connect to God in ways most people can't. You know, it's easy to connect to God and praise him when things are going good, but to connect to God when, you, when, you, when you're downtrodden, when your heart is hurt, and, and to feel the comfort that he gives you, you know, that's a connection yeah. with God that, that, I, that I tell you, man, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, because it's, it's funny you say that because I, I I remember a time in my life, like 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 I was going through something, I was going through, and um, every now and again I get a call from somebody who knew me from my past, and they say, well, this was said about you, that was said about you, and initially, it used to really make that man it used to get my blood boiling, and I used to want to. Um, I used to want to uh, clap back, right? And I, I didn't, right? I, I don't know what it was. It was something, I think it was the Holy Spirit, but there was a peace and a calm that came over me at some point that said, nope, close your mouth. You don't hear nothing. You don't say nothing. You don't see nothing, right? And and I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I, I, and, and this is a... This this is one of life's tough lessons for me. It took me years and years and years and years to figure this out. Check this out. I realized that when I repented, when I went to God in true repentance, right, he didn't grant me an escape from all my old issues, right? Right, because I, I was seeking God like I'd always been taught. If you pray about it long enough, it'll be all right. Well, you pray to God and you ask God for forgiveness, and you know what? God forgives you, and that's it. Well, no, your past always comes to, not always, but mo- the majority of the time, your past comes back. At some point, I'm going to say pretty much 99% of the time, your past comes back up, and, and, and those old habits come back. Those old bad feelings come back, and that that feeling of hopelessness comes back. And 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 I'm telling you, I thought that God had delivered me from all of that. And when it came back and it smacked me in the face in an instant, I'm I'm, I'm gonna tell you how 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 I realized God had given me peace through and from all of those situations. Because, listen, listen, listen listen to me, and this is really important. I knew God had delivered me, not because I didn't clap back, not because I didn't get angry about it. I knew God had delivered me because I was really calm about the situation. Listen, I started seeking God, and and, in seeking God, I know this is going to sound crazy, but it caused me to serve God. How was I serving God? I started serving the less fortunate when it comes to people. I started lending an ear to people instead of judging people. I started giving to charities and doing charitable work when I used to laugh and and say, these people, they don't appreciate it. They don't deserve it. They don't do this. And then I also started to, to, to try to bring peace to otherwise hostile situations, and God started to work. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, Jason. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I worked hard, right, to serve God, and my peace that I started to develop over the years was because I was serving God. But how were you serving God? Was it what, what was it your faith or was it your works? But listen, faith without works is dead, but you can work all day long, and if you have no faith, it is still no good. I had faith that God was going to deliver me, right, that God was going to bring me that peace in the works. See, the works is what really, truly allowed me to, 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 to kind of forget or to kind of accept 
what was being said about me. I, I, I realized that at some point in my life, I was a despicable person. And so these people who talked these negative things about me, they remembered the despicable person. And I'm telling you something. When, I, when it came full circle for me, Jason, it came full circle. And when it did, I believe that, 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 that God was saying to me, son, I have forgiven you. Son, you don't have to keep asking for forgiveness. The first time you prayed about this, I had forgiven you. Now, I didn't remove you from the situation so that you yourself could see that that, that this situation is not what connects us. Right? And, and, and my heart was just out for God. I just only wanted to feel him. And, and, and there was one time in my life I felt like God spoke to my spirit. I felt like I, I, I didn't hear anything audible, but I felt like he touched me. And, and, and I'm saying this, even though I feel this way right now, I know that God is going to deliver me. My, my concerns today are about our nation and about the, the, the spirits of the people of the world, not just in America, because we are connected. Believe it or not, if y'all don't want to believe me, that's your business, but the world is connected, okay? Uh, all these conspiracy theories, one world order, this, that, and other, there's only one world order, and that's God's order. And I want people to understand that, but, but I've been struggling. But I, I realize through my struggle, it drives me closer to him. It drives me closer to Christ. It, 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 and the closer I get to Christ, the more peace that I feel. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you, man? No, it makes it makes I, all I, the sense in the world. And I, and I think I love how you talked about, you know, when you first started about, you know, seeking peace, you know, through 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 helping others. And and, and I think, you know, people always say, go find your peace. Go find your peace in you. You know, I don't believe we find peace in ourselves. I think we find mm. peace when we're out there living for someone else, right? If our if our whole if our whole focus is just on us and our own circumstances, it is so easy to allow the mind just to kind of run crazy and always constantly playing over things. One of the things I always tell people who 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 may be struggling with some some depression or somebody with a heavy heart, I go tell them go out there and search. And they're like, man, I don't feel like it. I know, of course you don't feel like it. But when you get out there and you just start helping people, you know, people want to say, like, well, you see people worse off than you. I don't think that's the benefit of serving. I think the benefit of serving is that you, you're you giving back and, and, and you're giving a gift, you know, um, to one of God's beautiful creatures. And in doing so, I think that's what lifts the spirit, to know that you, you, you're kind of being God on earth when you do that. When you step out and you give to others, you know, and, and, and you really truly say, you know what, I'm gonna give like 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 there is no tomorrow. I'm I'm, go, I'm going to just serve and serve this other person and allow God to work on my heart. And I think that's where you know we we start to experience a lot of um, um <clears throat> a lot of uh, the peace that we talk about, the peace that you know uh, we can grab. You know, it doesn't come from us trying to, you know, do for ourselves, but a lot of times it comes from us trying to do and do it for others. See, and, 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 and that's the beauty. And I think one of the things I had to learn, too, was not get so caught up in doing for other people that I forgot that, um, how do I say it? And I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I know a number of people that I have um, been in contact with over the years they're so busy doing for other people that they never resolve, get their own issues resolved. And they always say, well, I know God got me, or I prayed about it. But they never get to that level of peace that they truly want in their hearts. But they get to a level of, uh, I like to call it dysfunction. Dysfunction for me when it comes to uh, a relationship with Christ is that I think that I'm doing so much for other people. I'm doing so many of these works that, I'm going to be fine. No, you never resolved your issue. You know what I'm saying? Don't come over here yeah. and help me with my problem. When your problem, you can't take your own advice. Your problem, you still jacked up. Now, I'm not saying you can't help people. I'm saying that, that the peace comes from also helping others while you allow God or others to help you. God sometimes helps us through other people. And, 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 and I think with everything that's going on in this world, all the negative things that are going on, 
prayer is really important. Some of us were called to be prayer warriors. Some of us were called to be warriors. Some of us are David, right? And, and, and some of us are not. And and I struggle with, Lord, how do you want me to fight this battle? And as I'm struggling, even today, as I'm struggling, I'm finding solace in, in the fact that I can steal every person that I meet. You know, sometimes the Spirit of the Lord will talk to me and they'll say, this person is in a bad situation. I'll just go up and ask them, can I pray for them? Or I'll just go up to them and shake their hand and say one of those really, really quick prayers while I'm shaking their hand. And sometimes they even know what I'm doing and sometimes they don't. And maybe he's just called me to pat him on the back and say, God bless you and keep it moving. You know, not that I feel like I've got to just be saying, uh, uh, being what we call holier than thou, but I think that when we acknowledge to ourselves that we are all called to be disciples of Christ. I think that um, this peace that we're looking for, at some point, it presents itself in our lives. It presents itself in our lives, and we understand. Because a lot of times God is speaking to us in plain old English, and then we uh, 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 keep trying to look up the definition in the Spanish dictionary. You ain't going to find it. Right? Two different languages. And so I, I'm struggling with that. I'm struggling with that. And so one of the things that I've started to do, especially since this phone call started, Jason, is that really think about and put my focus on Christ. Yeah. I, I, I want to feel his peace. Yeah, I think that focus is, 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 is what brings you peace because I think when you think about Christ and, and, and the goodness that, that comes from that, you know, you, you you have no the the natural response is be like, okay, I'm I'm good, right? You know, you when you spoke of you know um, serving others and reaching out, I think those those are the things that we we, we were called to do, and and that peace really comes from, you know, for me, my peace comes from just always looking to God and say, okay, what's next, right? You know, hey, I got this circumstance situation, what's next? You know, um, hmm. I, and I think, you know, when we talk about peace, you know, part of that peace comes from, and this is the crazy part, from submission, right? You know, how do I let go of control? And you say I get peace if I let go of control? No, no, no. My peace has to come from, and I have to control that peace. I have to, you know, I have to do those things to, 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 to obtain that peace. But when we submit to God and give our life to him and allow, and allow everything that he does in our life, to look upon positively, then, you know, we, we do experience that peace, you know? And I want to go back mm. to what you said about, about that person who's working so hard to help somebody else. There's a difference between operating from a place of peace and operating from a place of avoiding. What I see a lot of, okay. especially in the church, is that I don't want to deal with myself, so I'm going to go serve. I'm going to be at the church from, from sun up to sundown, just serving and doing everything that, that God wants me to do, you know, at least what I tell myself God wants me to do, instead of sitting myself down, you know, um, leaning in to that disruption in my life and allowing God to heal me from it, right? So I think, you know, when you see people out there who constantly serve and, and saying, like you said, well, God's got and I'm going to take care of everything else, it's like, well, God doesn't, God wants to take care of you. Right, but you've got to be ready, willing, and able to say, "Okay, God, I'm going to lean into this thing, and I'm going to trust you." With it. You know, so I've seen mm. that happen so many times where people, you know, they get out there and, and and they want to do all these things and putting all this work in and and, and doing all this stuff, you know, and they say it, it, it's in service of God, but in reality, it is it, to help them avoid the circumstances they're not they're not ready to deal with. You know, that's that's interesting. That's interesting. You know, it's funny. I'm thinking about what we're saying, but I'm also going back to John 16 and 1, where it says, uh, I have told you these things so that uh, you won't abandon your faith. You know, I need people to understand that we're talking about this right now, and I'm, I'm actually being transparent because I don't want to abandon my faith. I don't want the, the, the issues of this world to be so great and take them in that we abandon our faith. And I'll give you an example I don't know if y'all remember um, back during the pandemic and right before the pandemic and through the pandemic, there was a number of pastors who 
basically committed suicide. They killed themselves because the stresses were so great on them as pastors. And and I this scripture just really, really kind of drives it home for me. You know, um, 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 you know, the Lord has plans to prosper us, not to harm us. A lot of times we take that scripture out of context, but uh, um, I like the words right now, and it kind of fits a situation like this. I keep asking God. You know, I keep talking to God because I feel angry. I'm going to be honest. I feel that anger, and I ask God to forgive me for, for being uh, um, uh, a short-tempered with people, you know, for um, – basically judging people, you know, there are people I know that were in my life that we've been talking about the same issue that they've been having for 10, 5, 18 years, you know, 20, 30 years, and, and, and my patience is short with those people, and I ask God to forgive me for being so short with them, but, but, but the human side of Cedric says, you know, at some point you've got to hold them to account, and then I ask God, when have you done that to me? I ask myself, mm. when has God done this to you? And and so I, now I'm having to grow from my own mess. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and but yep. but but God is allowing me to hear these things again. Go back to the scripture. Scripture it says, I have told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith. So God allows me to see it, to hear it, to feel it, to say it, so that I look. Even though you're this way, Cedric. Don't abandon your faith. You know what I'm saying? And, and 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 so as long as I have faith and I have works, hey man, that's a, that, that's a chance. You know what I'm saying? I, and, and 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 I have to confess uh, with my mouth. You know, the, the, the words come out of my mouth, but 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 the confession really comes from my heart. And I'm saying, Lord, forgive me. And 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 as we talk here today, Jason, I'm telling you, when we first got on the phone, I was a bit angry. But right now I'm smiling, and I'm smiling because I know God has me. But I know that me knowing that he has me, it gives me that peace that I truly need. I don't feel hopeless. I don't I don't feel like like the world's going to just implode. I truly, um, uh, I like to say that I'm the Jonah of this world, but I'm not. Because I truly believe if... if, if if Jonah could go preach to the people of Nineveh, they hear God's word coming out of his mouth, even though his heart wasn't in it. They turn from their wicked ways. Oh, my God. And and they start to praise God, and God delivers them at that point. He spares all of their lives at that point, right? You see, I got to stop being like that. I got to go, even though I go with a heavy heart, even though I go with this burden and, and, and I go with a hard heart and I, I'm going to talk to people and God delivers. Listen, I don't want to go that way. I want to go with that faith that God can save anybody. That, 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 that how, how they say it in, in the Baptist church, Jason, I'm just a, a nobody trying to tell anybody, somebody, anybody. Uh, yeah, about somebody who can save everybody. However, if I messed it up, somebody text me and tell me I messed it up. But but what I'm saying though, I want I, I want to learn to walk with that always, not just sometimes, right? And 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 the reason why I want I want to take some for all the doubters and the naysayers who may be out, the reason why again is because I know the Father. I know Jesus Christ. And and because I have a relationship. You can't convince me otherwise. Yes, I'm going to struggle. We're all going to struggle. But I'm telling you that if we know that we know the Father, we know the Son, we know the Holy Spirit, man, nothing should be able to shake our faith. You Mm. know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Because... I mean, I love I love John 16 because I mean you go in there and and and, and, and do your background on the scripture. I'm I'm just quoting scriptures so they fit to what we're talking about here, but they actually fit in this, right? Um, 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 you know, he talks about remembering warnings, you know, and, and, and he talks about look, I didn't tell you earlier because you know, but but now he's telling us, and, and now we're getting the word. You know, 
And, and so we shouldn't grieve because of what we've been told. That should bring us that, that peace, that inner peace we need because we know Christ. And, and I think that's, I mean, me personally, right now I'm feeling a little bit better, right? Be, 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 because I know that the things we do in this world, a lot of the, the condemnation that we are experiencing is because we deny that he even exists. We don't want to believe in him. Now, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But but that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. And, um, um, man, I just, I just personally, I just want to say, wow, Lord, forgive me right now for feeling the way I was feeling when we got on this call. And I, I think if more of us would, 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 would be more like Christ, and truly confess our sin and ask for that forgiveness and then believe in our hearts and our minds and everything about us that that that, that, that we are saved and it shall be done. And we don't have to walk around with these heavy burdens. We don't have to walk around wanting to harm others. That's where my heart is today, Jason. My heart is right there. I don't even want to let it go. You know, I want to hold on. And, and I want to, man, I tell you, tonight I'm going to be doing some heavy praying because I need to ask for forgiveness for feeling the way I did. I wanted that instant relief. And and I know the word of God, it, just because you love God and you believe in God does not believe, does not mean that you're not going to experience the trials and tribulations of this world. As a matter of fact, I argue, and tell me if I'm wrong, Jason, I argue that the enemy is going to come after you even more. No, I agree. What you think? I agree. Yeah, I agree. And, 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 I, and, I, and, I, and I tell you, you know, that, that once again, I always tell people, I think feelings are blessings from God to allow us to experience them and experience this world in the, in a, in a, to, a, to a greater capacity. So although we may have feelings of discomfort, of unbelief, of anger, or or just any feeling that comes from our focus on our circumstance, the beautiful thing about that is how God can use that to bring us back and and to watch your journey hmm. just for a phone call from a place of anger, a place of hard heartedness, to a place of man, look how look you know look what God has done for me is the testimony, and that's the journey that I think we 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 always constantly want to be on, right? So it's not it's not always like you said, it's not always going to be gravy, and we are going to have those feelings, and our mind is going to focus on those circumstances, and we are going to lose our peace. But what I love about when that happens is that that peace is just reminded that that peace is eternal, right? You know, and it just takes one turn for me to find back that peace. There's a lot of things in life yeah. that once you lose them, you, you never get a chance to get them back. Once that opportunity is passed, it's gone. And you're and now you're dealing with the loss. But the great thing about our peace is that even if we turn away, even if we allow the feelings to overwhelm us, we get to we get to celebrate to know that man, I turned from this, and all I had to do was turn back, and there it is waiting for me. And, and worship and thank and praise God for that, you know, for His grace, for His continued grace, for His everlasting grace, you know. And from yeah. there, that's where our peace resonates. To know that our God is eternal, and and no matter what's happening in the here and now, there's an eternal God that 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 we're serving, right? So He's eternal, which means that when things are bad for you, He ain't going nowhere. He's right there. So you can you can ride with, him and He'll ride with you, right? He's eternal to mean that things may be bad now, but tomorrow there might be a greater thing. So. You know, when you talk about peace, you, you really hit the nail on the head. It resonates from within, and from within us, it's, it's that relationship with God that, that, that drives that peace, that, that is the foundation of that peace. And we just, like I said, we got to relentlessly pursue that, you know, and, and, and fight for it like we're fighting for our lives. That's right. You know, it, it, it's funny. Um you know, we, we we forget. We look at TV and we see what we consider the bad guys. They all die. And all the good guys, they live. 
or we kill the bad guys, nobody really notices that. But when one of us dies, you know, we 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 cry, we mourn, <laughs> we we do all these things. And I just want to say to everybody is that, you know, we we have to stop looking at the 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 video that way. We need to uh, see it through the lens of Christ. When any one of us does wrong, you know, he mourns, he prays for us. But when any one of us denies him, you know, his heart, and 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 I think that, I th- I think that uh, again as I go back to uh, chapter sixteen in John, I think that that we have to understand that. Uh, we shouldn't always, always assume the worst, um, because when when he told the disciples that he was going to go away, and um, um, and he was going to uh, how, how how I said he was going to go away, and he's going to go back to God. He's going to go back to the one who sent him, and 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 the disciples asked him where he was going, and, and he, he he turned it around basically. He said. He said that um how do I put it? He says uh he basically told me he says that that, that that you will grieve um you're gonna feel this great sorrow because of what I just told you. But this is the best thing for you. The best thing for you is that I go away because if I don't whoo man, if I don't go away and advocate for you, right? That's what he says, that's what he says. Ah man, then he won't come. Right? And and, 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 and and he says that if I do go away, then I will send him to you. In other words, look, look. <laughs> You're not going to be delivered from this unless I go this way. This is the way I have to go. I, I have to atone for the sins of this world. You You think you don't want me to go. You think this, but this is the best thing for you. And so I, I, I like that, and I like chapter 16 because, look, Jesus came to atone for all of our sins. There's nothing here we can do to drive a wedge between us and him. I'm saying that God can forgive you for anything, and, and, and I've been struggling with it all week. I've been struggling with it for the better part of two weeks, but I know that 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 um, um, God's righteousness is coming. His judgment is coming, and we better be prepared. Let's get our hearts right starting right now. We're starting tonight. Let's get our hearts right. And and, 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 and and instead of feeling the way I was feeling when I came on this phone call, when I came on this podcast, you know, let's get it right. You know, I, I know uh, I know that God has so much more for us, and that peace is going to come as we go out and do what he has called us to do, as we continue to pray, as we continue to build our relationship with him, that peace is going to come. So don't, man, don't don't let what's going on in this world get you down to where you just don't have any peace. We should all go home and rest. We should all go home and pray. We keep Christ front and center, and I'm telling you, I got to be reminded sometimes. I have to be reminded that 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 when that spirit and truth come, they'll guide you. All his truths will guide us. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That is glory. So, with that said, Jason, I'm sorry, man. I, I get carried away sometimes, but... but uh, thank you for kind of opening up my eyes. Thank you for kind of opening up my eyes, uh, allowing me to see that, you know what, it's, uh, okay, so I'm frustrated with what's going on, but I should not allow it to take or steal my peace. Y'all know that's what the enemy comes to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what he comes to do. And, and, and not just, y'all got to understand, to steal, to kill, and destroy. Not all at one time. There's no suffrage in that. No, he wants to make us suffer. Right? Yeah, but I, I know this, now this is cliche and this is coming from TV and whatnot. But y'all ever said that, that y'all ever seen that person that's so stubborn they won't even die? But they, are, they mm-hmm. seem to be a tortured soul on TV. They seem to be a tortured soul. 
That's what the enemy wants for us, to steal. He's going to steal your joy or take away all your peace, right? And then once he's done that, who knows how long that's going to take, then then he's going to try to just just kill the soul. Just The spirit of God is not going to be in you. And then once he does that, no matter how long it takes, then he's just going to destroy the whole rest of you. Your body is gone, right? He don't want you. He does not want you to die in the name of God. He does not want you to keep God coming. Uh, he don't want us praying about God. He don't want us standing up for God. No, 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 no. He wants us in a little, tiny, little bubble where our only focus is ourselves, where we are self-destructing. And he has orchestrated that just for us. And I'm just saying, you know what? I don't, that God don't want that for us. I don't believe that. And again, I know I'm going to get a few text messages, but please do text me. But I, I, I think that I, I know that our peace and our freedom come in Christ, right? Because the scripture in itself, it says, uh, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. And I ask you, look in the mirror, ask yourself, are you a child of God? I'm just saying, it's time for us to be reborn again. Yep, not, we know we can't come back through our mom's wounds, our mother's wounds. We know that ain't going to happen. But I, I advise you, go to John 1 and 13. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, a plan, but a birth that comes from God. That's what's important. That's what's important. So with that being said, uh, Sister Kim, you can go ahead and get us ready. I I, I just, uh, Jason, you want to do me a favor, man? You want to pray for this world before we uh, get ready to get out of here? Um, because, man, this world, we need it right now. We need it right now. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Uh, Lord, yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for opportunity, for giving us this broken world to live in existence, to be in the world but not of the world, but to be a bright beacon light for the shine, to bring peace and, and to illuminate what peace and joy feels like through our relationship with you. Um, we don't understand things that are happening in this world or why or why they go on, but we trust you in them. We trust you that you're going to that your that your will will be done, and that we just be the hands and feet that you call us to be in this broken place, in this broken well, bringing comfort and, 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 and clarity to the lost. You know, let them see God. Let them see uh, you and us and drive them and, and pull them closer to you. You, we thank you for being our Lord, our Savior, for walking that path of righteousness, for showing us how to honor God in the midst of the circumstance. You know, you said in the Garden of Gethsemane, knowing what was ahead of you, you know, you prayed for that cup to be taken away, but ultimately you say your will be done. Thank you for modeling that behavior of submission and the peace that comes from that. Holy Spirit, we thank you for coming for coming down. We know Christ died on this on the cross for for you to for you to, to, to be with us. And we and we pray that you stay with us and, and, and continue to indwell within us. To to just not allow us to get caught in our circumstances, but really focus on the peace, you know, from the internal peace from having you, the Holy Spirit, within us. Um, we pray that all these things in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. And y'all know what we do about this time. Find something you love, embrace it, chase it. That is your renaissance pursuit. This Minister Cedric and Jason. On Elation Radio, Sister mm-hmm. Kimmy, you want to take us out? God bless you. God keep you. Enjoy your weekend. His love. His love. She's the. His love never leave me, nor forsake me. His love when haters try to hate or try to break me. I got his love. Family's 
stop calling friends tripping. I got his love. Mad cause I changed. Now I'm living. I got his love. Never leave me. No forsake me. His love. When haters try to hate or try to break me. I got his love. Family stop calling friends tripping. I got his love. Mad cause I changed. Now I'm living. I got his love. Okay, I rise. His story on my mind. I hustle over time. Checking reservation destination on my mind. Looking in the mirror, yes, his image fit me fine. You eat in moderation, I prefer the buffet line. Attracted to his light, guess I'm bugging, hope he's smiling. Have my life been blinded, he fly, I co pilot. Can't wait to see my wings, arms extended like I'm flying. Here's where we co sign it. Everything my father did not worthy, but I thank him for his grace. He hold me like a brace, I'm on forever. Fate sharp, accelerate. Let haters say we breaking ground right here. Watch me. Demonstrate his love is not a fling A command you should incorporate Never yes, leave me, nor forsake me His love, when haters try to hate Or try to break me, I got his love Family stop calling, friends tripping I got his love, mad cause I changed Now I'm living, I got his love Never leave me, nor forsake me his love, when haters try to hate or try to break me, I got his love. Family stop calling, friends tripping, I got his love. Mad cause I changed, now I'm living, I got his love. Hey, go ahead, keep hating on me, I got his blood all on me. Jesus the one and only, with him I'm never lonely. We beating all opponents, you foolish if you want it. My life, my father own it, to me he only loaned it. I got his love all in my life, I never have to fight, I see it in my I see it in my wife, I feel it in my toes, I feel it in my highs, I feel it in my lows, this beat is froze, God squad, bro, you know I flow so cold, there it go, Holy Spirit all around like Mary go, am I blessed, look you in the face and I say very bro, oh yeah I know, scriptures on deck and I'ma let them go, God is love, Psalms chapter 54 and verse 4, whoa, never leave me, nor forsake me, his love, when haters try to hate or try to break me, I got I got his love, family stop calling, friends tripping, I got his love, mad cause I changed, now I'm living, I got his love, never leave me, nor forsake me, his love, when haters try to hate or try to break me, I got his love, family stop calling, friends tripping, I got his love, mad cause I changed, now I'm living, I got his love, he brought me from the streets, south side of the project, it was around about the killers and the hustlers on that dope I was right there, I almost right there. lost when I ain't make it playing pro ball But real, God picked me up Yeah, he saved me from my slow fall yes, My mind was suicidal When I looked at my bank flow <laughs> Child support snatched it It was blanket red zero was I started thinking Jumping in that Mississippi yeah. God helped me closest When this love finally hit me Fast yeah. forward to the summer of one three yeah. That's yeah. when I got serious And this word had me hungry yeah. I switched yeah. to a warrior Similar the KD, his love made his song cry, similar to Jay-Z, you never love. leave me, nor forsake me, his love, when haters try to hate or try to break me, I got his love, family stop calling, friends tripping, I got his love, mad cause I changed, now I'm living, I got his love, never leave me, nor forsake me, his love, when haters try to hate or try to break me, I got his love, family stop calling, friends tripping, I got his love, mad Cause I changed, now I'm living, I got his love